So for the next few weeks, we'll be looking. I've, when I was in Bible school, there is a subject that I love. And it's the second coming of Christ. Or Bible prophecy. And we're going to look into that. Lately, I've gone back. Somebody gave me a book. And I went through it by Dr. De, uh, David Jeremiah. And he's a very good teacher. Some of you know who he is. And we're going to go through this subject again. Because the second coming of Jesus, it prepares us to be ready. Amen? How many of you want to be ready? Uh, because it's very easy just to play church, just to live your life as if this world is our home. And we forget that Jesus is going to come very soon. Uh, and you've heard it so much, and many people have set a date for it so much, that now if I say Jesus is coming very soon, what happens is everybody turns their ears off. They say, oh, here's another one. Don't look at me like that. I'm, I, I'm not saying he's coming and I fix a day tomorrow, 10.30 in the morning he's coming. I didn't say that. If I ever say that, you walk away. But I'm telling you, Jesus said he's coming. And Jesus said the hour, the day and the hour, no one knows about it. Okay? So we're going to look into that. So let's look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 to 44. And, and how many of you have a Bible? If you don't have a Bible, Brother Dilip is there. We, I want you to open your Bibles. Because a lot of Bibles are closed nowadays. Nobody even opens them. Nobody even reads them. They are collecting dust. <laughs> but we have Bibles there. Just don't be ashamed. Just open it. If we end up just reading two scriptures and I'm done, that's fine. But we have Bibles there. Amen. Amen. Those are very powerful Bibles. They have a commentary on them, and I wanted you to pass it out. We want to be known as a Bible church. Hallelujah. The Word of God. We're going to get into it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to go through it. So the, the title is No One Knows the Day or the Hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you there? Are you there? You have a Bible? See, now, sometimes we don't read the Bible, and we're so afraid of opening it. Don't worry. We can, we can go slow. I really want to, I want you to open it, the papers. Some of you have yours on your cell phone, right? That's okay. <laughs> but I wanted you to open it. Amen. Hallelujah. So Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 to 44. But of that day and hour, no one knows. No one knows the hours. Hallelujah. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the day, those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Very familiar. People are busy eating and drinking. Whenever there is eating and drinking, that means people are happy. There's celebration going on. Nobody's ever going to think of anything other than everything is good. Eating and drinking. People are getting married and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. When Noah entered the ark, the Bible says that Noah preached for 100 years. God is a merciful God. He gives people chance. He waits and waits, and he's full of mercy, and he's waiting. But somehow, everything is going fine, and we think we don't need God. That's the society we live in. How many of you have friends like that? That as soon as you talk about God, they just shut you off. They push you off. Your family members, they don't want to hear what you're talking about. And many Christians, even when they hear, they don't want to identify as Christian because being Christian nowadays, it's not accepted out there. 
But you look at it in verse 30, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So two will be in the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Now some of you are new here. What exactly is that? Two people are in the field. They are working and one person was taken and one person is left. Who took them? God took them. And so the time is coming when God can take people from the earth. And we will get to that. It's called the rapture. And many people don't understand what that is. That's why I want to get back to it. The rapture of the church is when Jesus comes for his church. He comes for his bride. The church is referred to as the bride. He's taking his bride away from the church. And that, many theologians believe, it opens the door for the great tribulation and the coming of the Antichrist. And that's not the place you want to be. So many, then two people will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. And that really is good for me. It is good for you that the Lord, he could not reveal that to us. So it keeps us really prepared. Right? It is good to be prepared. And when we get here every Sunday, when we come to church, the purpose is for us to make sure that we are standing, that we are walking with the Lord. Can somebody say amen? amen. We have to be prepared. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, I wanted us to look at the word, the rapture. That word we hear, the rapture. The rapture and the second coming. Now, the rapture means the snatching away, the taking away. That word rapture is not in the Bible, but the concept of it is there. Like the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but you can see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So the word rapture, it means the snatching away, the taking away. Jesus coming and he will take his church. Now there are two concepts. The rapture of the church is not the second coming. Many people don't understand that. The second coming is when Jesus comes and reigns on the earth for 1,000 years. We'll be getting into that. I'm just trying to give you a preview of it so you begin to prepare. If you want to learn more about it, you can go online and visit Dr. David Jeremiah. He's very good at that, at teaching on that. He's a very balanced teacher. Now I want you to, the rapture will occur when Jesus Christ returns for his church. So he comes and meet with his church. And then we'll be raptured and then we'll meet with Jesus in the clouds. And then we'll go with him. Now some people are going to be left behind. How many of you watched that movie, the Left Behind movie? Yeah, it's a very powerful movie. I like it. I like it. But we want to look at this. Let's look at we want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Come on, open your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. I like to hear those pages turning. Hey? Oh, praise God. We're reading the word of God. 
So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 52. Can somebody read for us? Johan, go for it. Amen. So he's talking here that we will not all die. But in a twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ, those who died in Jesus will be resurrected. And those of us who are alive will be caught up. And that's what the word rapture comes from. To be caught up to meet with the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. And if I call it, I'll call it the meeting in the air. Like Superman. Ooh. I'll look around. Where's Victor? <laughs> Where's Matateo? And you look around. Where's Pastor David? Oh, he's not there. Oh, Pastor David didn't make it. The meeting in the air. That's not the second coming. That is Jesus coming for his bride. And he will take us. Hallelujah. Mike, is it, wouldn't that be good? Hey, eh? It is going to be powerful. I want to be in it. There's an old song they used to sing. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching. I want to be part of that. There's another movie they did where the rapture happened in a church like this. Boom. And there's few people left and they wept. <laughs> and the news went to town and people are running from town to the church because they knew their family members came to that church. And now something happened to them. Firefighters, police are running there. I don't want to be left behind. God's plan is not for you to be left behind. He wants you to be among those. And some of you will say, well, where is he taking us? He's taking us to be with him for seven years. And there's going to be a time of feasting, a time of rewards. People are going to be rewarded. They will be the best if you can even visualize. The Grammy Awards can be like garbage. People are going to be rewarded for the things they have done. Now, who are the people that are going to be raptured? These are believers, born again children of God. Hallelujah. And they are going to be raptured. Now, a lot of these things, many people don't like to listen to it. They think, oh, man, how many people say these things and it never happened. And that is the lie. Because when it happens, then you are not ready. The devil doesn't want you to be ready. We are called to be ready. In fact, Jesus gave us the parable of the ten virgins in the Bible where five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. You need your oil to burn. You need to have enough oil in you so that you can burn your life. Light can burn bright. Can somebody say amen? Let's look at another one here. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. Can somebody read that for us? Brother, Otis, read it for us. 16 to 17.
Amen. Hallelujah. For the Lord himself, this is Jesus coming himself. He's not sending his angels. He's coming and he comes to and we will be rest. He doesn't come here. He meets with us in between. Hallelujah. And he will be caught up. We'll be meeting with him. The dead in Christ. Your grandma, your mom who died in Christ, they will be resurrected. Hallelujah. And those of us who are alive will be, man, I want to leave this body that always says I need coffee in the morning. I mean, that's, we're going to have a body that is powerful, a body that even Superman doesn't have it. Hey, eh? We're going to be resurrected. Hallelujah. How many of you are hurting in your body? Oh, man, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. Oh, hallelujah. No more bitterness. No more unforgiveness. Oh, hallelujah. We'll be caught up to meet with the Lord in the air. This is the best thing that can ever happen in the world. This is, the, this is going to be the biggest event in the world. But let me tell you, even with that, many people will not believe. Many people would rather choose to listen to the enemy than to follow what God says. So the rapture will take place, and Jesus will take his church, and they will meet, will meet with him in the air, and then we'll go with him, and we will always be with him. Now, this is the rapture. So what I want to establish today is that there is a difference between the rapture and the second coming. And I want to establish that because we always think the rapture and the second coming are the same thing, but they are not. Oh, Jesus is coming soon. So we're thinking he's actually coming right here and establish his government. That's not. First, he takes his church and he takes his church from the world because there are things that are going to happen after the church is taken that you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. And already the world is preparing for that, right? One world government, you can't buy or sell until you have the mark of the beast, 666. And it's coming there. I read, I read a lot of prophecies about that, a lot of study about that from David Jeremiah. You can hear all that. They already are trying to chip people. Have you heard about it? So you can't, that means, it, yesterday I got up early, I have something, I have to meet a friend, and I went with him to Avonlea, everybody was sleeping. And then I came home, do you know that from your phone, they will know where you went? That's, that's how my wife tracked all the kids. Oh, Johan, you are there on Golden Mile, on this place at this time. What were you doing there? <laughs> Through your phone. But what if you have the chip in your hand? The government will know where you are. They will know what you spend your money for. They will know who you are talking to. They will know what kind of movies you watch. All these things will be known to the government. And you cannot succeed, I want you to hear this, until you get the chip. Because you cannot sell and buy. So we become dependent on these things. And then there will be one world government. It is coming, guys. I don't know whether you see it or not. It is coming. They want to establish. See, the devil always wants to duplicate what God is already planning to do. God is trying to come and take over. And there will be a 1,000 years reign of Jesus Christ on the earth. And the devil said, no, don't think about that. I have another one. I want to establish mine. One world government through the U UN. The UN has been here for long. They haven't done anything. I know about them well. That's where all your tax paid dollars is going there. Man. They're all driving Land Rovers. Has anybody driven a Land Rover in Regina? I went to the Sudan and I see a Land Rover 4x4. 
And I only see three, four people drive that in Regina. It's a very expensive vehicle. But that's what they're doing there in Africa. Everybody has those vehicles. Your tax paid dollars goes to and fund those people there. And they're just squandering the money. It doesn't reach to the real people that are down there. But the UN is claiming to establish a one world government. And through pressure, through your information, you cannot sell, you cannot buy. Your life is now controlled by the chip that you have in your hand. Or they say, how oh, with that we'll be able to know who is committing a crime. We'll find them. You'll be tagged. You can't sell, you can't buy. And if you're a Christian, if you're saying Jesus is the way, you're a bigot. You're not speaking the truth. You're, you see, Jesus is not the way. There are so many ways. Oh, yeah, that's good. All of us are children of God. Oh, everybody. But the Bible doesn't say that. I don't want to be there. And also, if you read the, in the book of Revelation, there's going to be, it said, about a third of the stars will fall down. Just think about it. There will be all kinds of disasters, earthquakes, all kinds of things that are going to happen. I don't want to be there. I want to be in the first flight. Hallelujah. Out of here, we'll be with him. Now, if the rapture is not the second coming, then what is the second coming? We need to look at that. Amen? Let's look at it in Revelation chapter 19. How many of you are afraid of the book of Revelation? <laughs> you see, I always tell you, the book that you don't want to read, there got to be a reason. Because that book tells you things that you don't want to hear. Right? The scripture that you avoid is more likely the one God wants you to read. <laughs> so let's look at that. Revelation chapter 19. He says, verse 11. Are we there? Hallelujah. Who's ready to read for us? I just want to engage you. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, brother, why don't you read for us? James. Then I saw heaven open, and a white horse was standing there, embroidered with saying, Faithful and true, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe. Oh, hang on there, hang on there. The armies of heaven, you know who are they? The armies of heaven, the angels, they're all dressed in fine linen. Now, this time, the rapture has already taken place. We are there for seven years. And now he's coming this time. He's not going to meet anybody in the air. He's coming to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. <laughs> he's going to establish his kingdom. And he's coming for war. This is not the Jesus that we see, you know, in the manger, the little Jesus. This is not the Italian Jesus that you see in many pictures with the hands like that. That's not how he is. This is a warrior. He's coming to rule and reign. Now, it tells us that his linens are dipped in blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, brother, you keep going. Keep reading. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. Hmm. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine cup. Hmm. On his robe, at his side, was written this title, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. King of kings. And Lord of Lords, hallelujah. He is coming to rule and reign. Now he's coming, that is, we come to rule 
with him. You are coming into the world with Jesus from there. That his second coming. In the second coming, we come with him to rule and reign in the earth. And that is where the Bible says that the lion will lie with the lamb. A child will play with the cobra. There will be no weeping. The world will see peace for 1,000 years. Why 1,000 years? Because Jesus is coming and the devil will be bound. He will be thrown to the pit. Right? And the Antichrist will be bound and Jesus will reign for 1,000 years. Now, when we come here, there are people that are still living here. And Jesus is going to establish his government. And in order for you to have a kingdom, you need to have subjects of the kingdom. The subjects of the kingdom will be the nations of the world. There will still be Sudan, there will be Canada, there will be South Africa, China, but it will be ruled in righteousness right from Jerusalem. Hallelujah. That will be the best time to ever be because there will be no global warming. Jesus living in Jerusalem, everything will grow. The planet will change just like that. He will say, let there be, and there it will be. He is the one who created it, and he's coming to his world, and he will establish it. Can somebody say amen? amen. This is very important for us to get back to these things, to know that this place that we're living in is a temporary place. This is not our home. Because sometimes we live as if all that we're living for is this. But I'm telling you, Jesus is coming and he's going to get his church. This is to provoke us to be ready. Are you ready? Many of you are afraid of it. I know that. Because somehow, I don't, I don't want to beat on my son, but he always thinks that the second coming of Jesus is going to be interrupt his plans. <laughs> he has good plans. I'm telling you, if you can see what plans are there, this is garbage. You don't want this. There's nothing here. But he has good plans. Johan has good plans. He just doesn't think he should come now until he accomplishes it. <laughs> Eh? The second coming of the Lord. Now, I wanted to put some things there just for us to kind of understand. Did you learn something? So we, we are going to revisit that. We're going, I'm going to take time on this, and we're going to read, get into the, the seven churches in the book of Revelation. I was just going back to those things. It's talking about the lukewarm church, the loveless church, the rich church, the rich church, they think they are rich, but they are poor. The backsliding church. But I want you to forget about those churches. Just put yourself there. On one of the churches, it says, you have a reputation. How many of you have a reputation, whether it's good or bad? We all do. You see, maybe you have a reputation that you used to be this. And sometimes we can live our lives based on a reputation that we have. And the Bible says you have a reputation that you are alive, but you're dead. You see, that's the danger of being, you know, being, you know, I ask myself, Pastor David, are you living in your reputation or are you living in the present with God? If something good happened to you here, we hang on to that reputation. And we neglect to work out our salvation every day with fear and trembling. And in Revelation, he said, you have a rep reputation that you are alive, but you are dead. He said, I have this against you. Don't put it, oh, this is about the church. This is speaking to you. God is telling us, he said, repent. I come quickly. 
He said, I have, but you have something. He said, you have something left that you can work it out. You see, God always has something in us. He leaves something in us so that we can stir that up. And when we get together like this, you already have something in you, the deposit of God's word in you. And when you hear these words, the preaching of God's word, your faith comes up. That's why we get to church on Sunday and we feel like, wow, I, I just feel this is right. But when we go home, what happened? We are back again in two hours. And that's why we need to take this and take it home. Turn your TV off. And turn your gospel music on. Praise God. Amen? So number one, meeting in the air versus returning with him. In the rapture, believers meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we read that verse 16 to 17. Revelation 19 verse 4. In the rapture, believers meet the Lord where? Come on, guys. Where? In the air. We need to know that. That's the rapture. The meeting in the air. Before the tribulation versus after the tribulation. The rapture will happen before the tribulation. We read that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, Revelation 10, 3, verse 10. The second coming will happen at the end of the seven years. After the Antichrist reigns on earth for seven years. And it will be a difficult time to be a Christian. And that is the only time during the seven years we'll get into that next week. God there will be the two prophets, Elijah and Elisha. They are going to come back again. And those times they preach with fire. And there will be angels also that are preaching during the tribulation time. There will be people that get saved during the tribulation time. But it will be a tough time to be a Christian. And it, they will pay it with a price. We'll look into that Slowly, slowly. We don't, we don't want to rush these things. The third thing we need to look at, deliverance. The rapture is God rescuing. It's like Moses going to Egypt, and he delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land. The rapture is like when God sent his angels to go where? to Sodom and Gomorrah and rescued Lord out of Sodom to a better place because God will not see his righteous suffer along with the wicked. And that's uh, the rapture versus judgment. Second coming is judgment. Jesus is coming to judge and he will judge the world and all those who were involved in. Hidden versus sin, seen by all. Now, the rapture is not seen. It just happened. Surprise, boom, we're gone. Eh? But the second coming, everybody will see it. Everybody will see when Jesus comes. Let's look at that. Let's read verse, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. In the second coming, they will see him. They will see, the world will see him as he comes. So in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Visaka. Amen. So they will see him, even the ones who pierced him, they will see him and they will mourn. You know what are they mourning? Oh, me. I <laughs> I'm done. 
You see, they are going to see him coming. Do you believe that? You see, unless you believe these things, I don't know what kind of Jesus are you following. And last week we talked about the resurrection. Unless you believe in the resurrection, you cannot be calling yourself a Christian. I mean, what kind of Christ are you following? And Jesus spoke about his coming. He's coming again. And we have to believe the word of God and not the words of man. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. The fifth one is, at any moment, the rapture happens at, at any moment. It can happen now. I can't tell you when. I'm just supposed to be ready. At any moment versus only after certain events. That's the second coming. After, second, after certain events have taken place, then the second coming of Jesus will occur. But the rapture can happen at any moment. Get ready. I mean, this is a time to get ready. I don't have to tell you, look at the world. Look at what is going on in the world. How many of you watch the news? Uh, you just, you can't keep up about the evil that is going on in the world. It is like, any, it's never happened before. And some people say, well, I saw, this is always, see, n let nobody tell you anything other than the word of God. We want to stick to what the word says. Can somebody say amen? The rapture could happen at any moment. The second coming won't happen until certain events take place. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 14, uh, 4 verse 14 to 18. Somebody read that for us. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 to 18. I'm going to read. Okay, here we go. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him. Oh, he will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. If you are a Christian, when you die, you're sleeping. You're just resting, sleeping, because he will bring you up. And then he goes, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the second coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then he goes on to say, then we who were still alive, if it happens right now, that means we're still alive. The dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ, whoever you know that passed away a while ago, they as believers, they're going to rise first. And then we who are alive will be caught up to meet with him. In the air. That means there are certain people that will die, and there are certain people that will never experience death. They will be caught up to meet with Jesus in the air. This is not Pastor David coming up with a, his own teaching. This is the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 And I'm telling you, the world is looking for these things. There are people out there, they don't even know that such things are there. But if we don't share the good news with them, they may be our friends at work. They may be our gym buddies or drinking buddies. I don't know if there's such things. But you're going to be in heaven and they're not. Does that bother you? It should. If you really have Jesus, if we really do have Jesus, we will reach out. 
because he reached out to us. He reached out to us. How can we hold on to it except share it? This is what it is to be a Christian, that even as Jesus gave his life for us, we also ought to give our lives for our brethren. Giving our lives, that means we have to be concerned about their spiritual destiny, where they are going to spend eternity with God. And if we don't share that in this world where everybody is going to heaven, this is the biggest lie. Then the Son of Man died in vain. Jesus died in vain. Not everyone is going to heaven. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, it says, Not all those who call me Lord, Lord, Lord. See, everybody out there, they, they are calling on the Lord. They don't even know who he is. And Jesus said, Not all those who call me Lord, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. Some will say, Yo, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? I was there at uh, Wellsprings Victory Church. I even helped with the chairs, Lord. He said, no. Ye must be born again. And we have to share this gospel with our friends. Invite them here. They, by the time we're done the singing, their hearts are open to receive the word of God. There's something about the atmosphere that is being created here. And if you don't know how to do that, Brother Charles is here. Brother Avi is here. There are all kinds of people here. Get them to the youth. They are going to hear the good news. We have to share. And you don't have to. Many people, when, when I say this, you think, oh, I'm going to stand on the street and preach like John the Baptist. That's not what I'm talking about. Here is an easy way to share your go the gospel with your friends. In now's world, the world we are living in. If you stand on the street and preach loud and all that, people will just walk away. So what do you need to do? Just be nice to people. Just be nice to people. Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Oh, my name is John. Hey, John. So what is going on? How was your week? Well... Oh, it's been rough. What did you do on the weekend? This is powerful. What do you do on the weekend? Oh, man, I was, I just had some buddies, you know, we had some drinks and we partied all night. And, okay. Then they ask, what about you, David? What do you do? Me? Oh, I went to church. Oh, you go to church? Oh, okay. Oh, so what is your church all about? See, there's a conversation. Be interested. Do you have a family? Oh, I have a family. You know, my grandma is in the hospital. You know, they found she has cancer. She's really sick. Oh, can I pray for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can pray for can, Oh, is there a way? You know, uh, my pastor, he likes to go to the hospital and pray for people. Can he come if I tell him? And then I go there. We pray for her. Man, these people, their faith just... They, then they said, hey, so what do you... I, I never even asked them to come to church. Slowly, slowly. Then I ask. Oh, then he said, oh, you know, I used to go to church when I was a little boy. My, my mom took me to church. And they sing. They, oh, there's that song. He came from heaven to earth. Oh, that song, yeah, wow. I said, wow, your mom is really preparing you. You know why, why your mom took you to church? Because she was trying to prepare you. She is preparing you so that you can follow God. Your grandma did a good job. And your name is John. It's in the Bible. I mean, it's not difficult. But if we, we all can share in a very good way, we can invite our friends to church. Without pressure. Can somebody say amen? amen? So that we can spend eternity with them. And they need to see that when it comes to church, when it comes to Jesus, you cannot be persuaded. 
you're fully persuaded, you're fully convinced that what you have, it is the best. But I'm telling you, there are a lot of Christians, we are second guessing ourselves. Maybe following Jesus is not good for me right now because I have other plans. There's a little bit of things that I want to do. I know Jesus won't like it. So let me go and do those things. I'm thinking I'm tired of it. Then I can come and follow Jesus when I'm 50. No. I'm telling you. This, uh, oh, I can't follow Jesus right now. I have to do certain things that I want to do. And I know he doesn't like it. But let me finish those things first. I'm telling you, this is the biggest lie there is. You need to give up those things and follow Jesus now. And your friends are watching. Your friends are looking for somebody who takes Jesus at his word. And they will come and they will follow Jesus with you. Amen? Amen. Next week we'll continue again on those lines. Amen? That Jesus is coming. And he's coming. And he is going to ask us when the rapture happens. I want to be standing there. I want to be standing with him. All of us in our church standing in the throne room. The Bible says, and crowns will be given. Crowns are given. And each person is given a crown for what they have done. And the people took their crowns and they said, Lord, we are not worthy. We can't wear this crown. And they gave it, a, they put it at Jesus' feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Why not we stand and then we'll close. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is a message so that we can recommit ourselves to God. Maybe you are born again. Maybe you've given your life to Jesus already. But you need to recommit yourself to him again. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you came 2,000 years ago and you died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I receive you. I accept you. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. Write my name in your book in heaven. Lord Jesus, protect me. Give me the confidence not to be ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. Help me to share this good news with my friends, with my family, with strangers, that they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.